Hello, you are welcome to University of Cape Coast ITS course video tutorials. Quickly, let's have a review of the keyboard. We have the alphanumeric keys. These are numbers, that is alphabet and numbers, alphanumeric. So A to Z on the keyboard and 1 to 0 are this part of the keyboard, alphanumeric. We have the backspace key, which is used to delete from right to left when you are typing. We have the enter key, which is used to send the insertion point to the next line. The shift keys usually are two shift keys on the keyboard. And then when you press the shift key in combination with other keys, they're able to give you a different function. For instance, shift plus two, this key number two, will give me the function at, at the top of the number two. We have the control keys. As I said, there are two of them also on the keyboard normally. When I press control with other keys, I am able to do other functions. For instance, control A will select all the things that I have typed. Control Z will undo everything for me. We have the space bar key. That is the longest key on the keyboard. That is used to create spaces between letters or words when typing. We have the ALT key, which is used in combination with other keys to perform other functions. For instance, ALT and F4, when I press them together, I can close a window. We have the cursor control keys on the navigation keys, which are the four arrow keys on the keyboard. It is used to move the insertion point towards different directions. We have the function keys, which start from F1 to F12 function keys. We have the escape key, which is used to exit some um, windows. Then we have the numeric keypad, which is made up of numbers from 0 to 9. Numbers. Then we have the num lock key, which is termed as a toggle key. When I press the num lock key, it can be used to turn on and off the numeric keypad. So in these are some of the keys on the keyboard, which is going to help us in the work that we are going to do. Let's launch the Microsoft Word. We can do that by clicking at the search part of the tax bar and just type in Word. Then as it shows, we just click on it to launch it. To launch means to open it. So from here, we go to blank document. Then we have our blank document. Quickly, let's have a review of the things in Microsoft Word. On top here, we have our ribbon. On top here, we have our ribbon. And on the ribbon, we have tabs on the ribbon. An example of a tab is a home tab, insert, draw, design. You can go on and on. These are tabs on the ribbon. Under each tab is a command. Under each tab is a command. For instance, the home tab, I have clipboard, font, paragraph, styles, editing, add-ons. These are the commands that I have in home tab. So when I change and click on the different tabs, the commands under the tab will change as and when I click on a tab. Okay, let's come back to the home tab. Remember the home tab is the default tab that opens for you when you open Microsoft Word. And under the tab, home tab, the command clipboard and for instance the command font has what we call um let me explain well under the tabs are groups sorry under the tabs are groups so you have the clipboard the fonts the paragraph the style editing and add on they are actually groups right so when i click on insert tab i have different groups under the insert tab good so let's come back to the home tab now under the groups we have commands or items under them so for instance when i choose the fonts we have commands like the bold italize underline and then we can change our font names we'll look at all these later on remember the default fonts and the default font size okay we'll come back to these things now let's quickly go on let's click on file in the tab that's called a backstage view. Click on file. Then you come to more, more, the last item there. Click on more. 
Then for more, an option will open. We go to options, options, and choose options. From here, we are giving these options to look at. We are going to focus on save and customize ribbon. Save and customize ribbon. So let's click on save. Okay. So what we are going to do here is to save auto recovery information every, it is 10 minutes by default. So we want to reduce the time that word takes to save automatically the things that we type. So from here, we will adjust the time to one minute, to one minute, so that Word will automatically save our work every minute, every minute. Then we'll come to customize ribbon, customize ribbon, and click on it. Now this is customize the ribbon. So the ribbon is what I showed you the tabs on it. So I want to customize the ribbon. We can check or uncheck the things that we have on it. So for instance, let me go back and show you here. So you can see that with all the items that we have here, they are all on the ribbon. The tabs are on the ribbon. So when we go through the process and we select customize ribbon and uncheck these items, uncheck means we click on it and then the ticking will go. So we click on OK. The ribbon, all the items we uncheck, we are telling Word that we don't want to see it there. So it has taken them off. So customize ribbon. Let me go back quickly and then put them back. I believe you'll be able to do that. It's a simple process. Okay, then click on OK. So they are all back now. This is customized ribbon. Okay, let's still stay with the file tab. That is a backstage tab, the backstage tab or the back view tab. So let's click on it. And at this time, what we are going to do is that we are going to use um, a template so we want to create a template so we come here we go to more templates more templates and then we choose the template we want to work with this one we want to work with a template known as resume resume and cover letter okay so we click on resume and cover letter to choose a template that we can actually edit and save them for any work that we want to do that's our resume so we have normally beautiful templates here that you can actually customize for yourself as your template so i click on any let me just select one of them by clicking on it and then go to create click on create so this is going to help me create my own resume and then save it as part of word so when i have it like this i can now edit this resume and then save it so after editing, editing means when you click, you can actually click there and delete what is there and type in what you want. Okay, so in this case, I can just delete what is there and just put in my name. So I am actually editing it. So I'll type in the information I want. If it's a picture, I can take the picture and put in the picture I want. After typing in the information and editing it to suit me, I can now save, go to file go to save us and then let's let me just decide where i'm going to save it so i go to browse then i save it with my name and select the save as type so i click on the save as type it will give me a drop down then i go to word template word template and click on it then i'll save this as my word template so after saving when i close my word document and then open it again and whilst i've opened i can actually go to more templates and after clicking on more template i'll see personal i click on personal and then the template that i created is here with my name on it so when i click on this template this is the template that i created so it is there. Word has saved the template for me as my resume and I can use it anytime I want as part of my Word document. All right. So let me open just a new or blank document. I go to File and I go to New. 
to open a blank document. So I have a blank document to work with. I want to work with a new one. But basically, one thing that you should remember that anytime you are doing your work, even though we've had work to automatically save every minute for us, it is important we save the work in our name or a name that will help us to remember. So the same way we go to file, we go to save as, we browse where we want to save the work, then we type the name of the file that we are working on. So for instance, this one, I want to name it Nana. Yes. So once I type the name, you have to choose the location where you want to save the work. By default, Word will save your work in documents. So you can choose where you want to save it, either the desktop or anywhere. I want to save this work on the desktop. So as I click on desktop and I come and click on save, remember, let me show you something. Before saving, let me show you something. Let me go back. So you see the name of this document is in the title bar. This is the part called the title bar, the topmost part. The name of the document is document 2. As soon as I save the name, I save the word now in my name, you will notice that I'm saving on the desktop as I said, save. The name of the document has now changed to the name I gave it instead of the document 2 that I had. So this when you save your work, the name will change in the title bar. Okay, so let's get on to business. Now, what we are going to do is that we have seen the keyboard. Press equal to on the keyboard and type the word run. For the purpose of the video, let me increase the font size so that you can see well what I'm typing. So equal to run equal to run then you open a bracket so in typing the bracket what we showed you press the shift key and you press the key that has the bracket on it so it will now type you give you the item on top of it so let's say run then open a bracket five comma two okay then i'll close the brackets okay after typing it you hit the enter key we know the enter key hit the enter key Okay, let me reduce the font size so that you will see what you've done well. Let me reduce the font size for you so that you see what we've done well. Okay, so you realize that when I type RAND52, it has actually given me five sentences. So five paragraphs with two sentences. So we have one, two, three, four, five paragraphs with two sentences that is what i asked word to do for me and word has done that okay now we want to just use this text to do some basic formatting now this is what we are going to do we want to make sure that anytime you type your work it conforms with what ucc wants now in the university of cape coast your work should be in fonts called times new roman so this is what we can do we can actually highlight all the work go to the fonts area so to highlight click at the end of the work and then drag over it or you can actually press control key on the keyboard ctrl whilst your finger is still on it you press on a it will select everything for you there are various ways you can select your work then you go to the fonts group then you go to the command, you click on the drop down arrow, then you look for Times New Roman. You can actually type it on the keyboard T I M. Then it will suggest it for you. Once it suggests it for you, then you click on the Times New Roman. So that is the font name by default, University of Cape Coast we use. Then the font size by default should be 12. So you click on this drop down arrow to change the font size to 12. Or you can use any of these two items, grow font or shrink font, to adjust your font size. So by default, we've set the font size. Another item that I want to mention to you is that in the University of Cape Coast, your work should be in such a way that it conforms with everything they want. Okay, now I actually generated the text before changing the font name and font size. We can also change the font name and font size before we generate our text. Okay let's look at how to go about that okay so let me just use the backspace press on the backspace and hold it and delete everything that is there okay or i can highlight and use the backspace to delete everything okay so when i change my font names select them and i go to equal to run 
no space then i just press the open the bracket and let's say this time around i want nine paragraphs and then three sentences under each paragraph and press enter you will notice that word has actually formatted my work by using the font name and font size that i set there before generating the test so you can actually change your font name and font size before you generate your test okay interestingly there is an item that you can actually use in microsoft word to make your work very easy for you so for instance you should learn how to highlight a test so i've i've put the mouse here at the back of the s click there and drag over it once i drag over it i am selecting this test so let me come here and come down i've selected this test so in case i want to change the font color of this text i just go here click on the drop down arrow and let's say i've selected color red and i've actually changed the font color of the text now i want to repeat the same thing apply the color to any of the paragraphs here all that i have to do is to click in to click in the text where the color is and come to the clipboard and click on format painter so when i come to format painter let's say i want to change this part that is where it says to make your document blah blah so notice the mouse pointer it looks like a brush when it comes to the far end it changes into an arrow it will not do what i want for me so i have to make sure i come to the end the yes at the back of the t when it changes to a brush click on the mouse hold on the mouse it means when i press the left side of the mouse my finger will still be on the mouse that's the left side of the mouse and i'll drag it over the text as soon as i release my finger it will apply the changes that i want there for me without worrying myself to replicate the changes so let's say i have highlighted this i have bolded it eh? so it's in bold i want to bold the other one i click somewhere within the text that i have click on format painter come to here click drag over it or anywhere i want to drop it and then when i release my finger from the mouse it will apply the changes that i have there so without worrying myself to go and now highlight it and now go and change the color or apply anything that i want to apply to it i can use format painter to do that for me another important thing that you have to note is that with the university of cape coast anytime you are going to print a work you look at the margins normally with a normal work it's not probably anything that you have to bind the margins as we know it's one inch all round one inch all round let's look at how to set the margins in case we want to bind the work how to set the margins let's go to page layout tab tab sorry it means layout tab and click on it and click on it now when we have layout tab click we can now come to the group called page setup and click on a small drop down arrow at the corner click on that drop down arrow as the mouse pointer is on it you click then to open our margins for us you can see that by default the top part is one left is one then we have the bottom and right all one one all round in case you have to bind your work then you need to change the left part of your work which is one to 1.5 so when i click on the up arrow 1.1 two three four five it will change the left side to 1.5 when i click on ok notice the change that we are going to have in our document so ok so you can see that the left side has pushed in a little further than what we have at the right side to appreciate that let me just select okay we'll come to that so there is no so you can see the left side has pushed in a little so this is I've set the left side to be 1.5 margin. Then there is something called paper orientation. Same place, layout. Then the orientation is how you want the paper to appear. See, when the paper, when I click on orientation in the page setup group, a drop down menu will come. We have portrait and landscape. 
So the portrait is when you view the paper in that straight format. And then the landscape is when you turn it um, in a longer part to look at it. You can see per the drawing to know what we are referring to. So this portrait, let me make my window small for you to appreciate the portrait. And then let me make the landscape for you to appreciate the landscape. So you can see the difference in the portrait and landscape, depending on how you want your document to be read. So either you select portrait or you select landscape. Okay, so let's, let's go on with this. Now, the another thing that we want to look at still in the layout group is the paragraphing or the paragraph. Okay, so in the layout group, we have the paragraph. Okay, but for this video, we'll look at it from this angle. We want to use the paragraph actually in the home tab, not that of the layout tab. The paragraph in the home tab. So you click on home. Okay, so under home, the paragraph that we have here, we want to do a sentence. We have to pick the items here one after the other and have a look at them. Okay, so under the paragraphing, when I put the cursor on it, it will name the item that we want to look at. I first have the left alignment, which actually puts push my work to the left side. We have the center alignment, which will center your work in the middle. We have the right alignment, which will put your work at the right side. And then we have the justify, which will make sure that it will straighten your work for both edges. Okay, let me just open a new control N will give me a new page. So let me just show you this. So once left alignment is by default selected, when I type, it starts from the left. Should I select the right, the center alignment, it put the work right at the center of the page. And the right alignment will put the work right at the right side of the work. To appreciate the justify better, let's go back to our old work that we we're working on. Now you can see that the left side is actually straightened up while the right side is not so. Let me highlight all the text. Control A can highlight everything for you. Now when I click on justify, notice the right side, what will happen to it. Okay, so you realize that the right side of the work is straightened up in a straight line as well as the left side of the work. So in the University of Cape Coast, whilst doing your work, we use the justify to make sure that both side margins are straightened up in your work. Don't forget to select justify for your work. Another important thing that we work on is that when whilst I've selected or highlighted the text, I can actually change my line spacing. Now, in most cases, when you're doing your project work, the line spacing is 2.0, 2.0. In other cases, when you're doing your normal work, a 1.5 line spacing will also be accepted depending on what the lecturer is asking you for. Line spacing, remember, is the spaces between each line in a document. So once I select 1.5 or 2.0, the spacing begin to increase and widen up. So depending on the spacing specification that your lecturer has given to you, you have to select that spacing for your work. That is line spacing. Now let's go to another important feature. Uh, to appreciate this, let's, let me just put a cursor on it. It's called bullets. Then from bullets, we go to um, numbering. And from numbering, we go to uh, multi-level list. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at um, these items as well. So in bullets, for instance, I am actually itemizing something. In this case, let me go down. So let's say I want to name some things. So I go to click on a drop down arrow beside it and I select the bullet I want. So let's let me say coffee. I press enter on the keyboard. The next bulletin items come. Then I go to AMA. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Let me just. I go to AMA. Then I can go on and on and on and on. So that is how to use the bullets. Now let's let me press the enter key to come down and look at how to use the numbering. So when I click on a different numbering star comes either one, two, three, one with a comma, the one that you prefer you choose to type um, the items that you want to type. So I have um, let me go for names like. Adam. Uh -huh. Uh 
then I can go for Mohammed. Yeah, so I've actually used the numbering to do this, as you can see. So in the multi-level um, numbering, that's the multi-level list. When I select the multi-level list, for instance, let's just give it an example. So for instance, I come here and choose the multi-level that I want. Okay. Now, when I click on the multi-level, let's say I'm doing my work and I go to chapter um, one. So that is my first item. Then I come here and type, um, in typing chapter two, uh, chapter one, under it, I want to do introduction. So I go to heading style two, then I type introduction. Then in the same way, after typing the introduction, I want to do an overview, which is also part or uh, under the chapter one. So I still go to heading style two and click and then I type over view. Okay. So whilst I'm doing this, it is actually giving me a numbering showing that the one for chapter one, under the chapter one, I have 1.1. Under the chapter one again, I have 1.2. So if in case I have something else to um, do under the chapter one, probably let's say the same heading, let's say objectives. Uh -huh. So objectives. So I have the objectives under still chapter one. Now let me go for chapter two. In going for chapter two, I come to the heading style one again and click on it and select chapter two. Chapter two. So I have chapter two. So you realize that it has itemized the chapter two as number two. Now let's say I am going to do um, an introduction under the chapter two. So I click on the heading style two and then type um, another introduction. Uh, let's say, yes, introduction, introduction. You realize that it has itemized that one to 2.1, 2.1. Okay, so let's go for another item under the chapter two and say um, definition of terms. So I'll go to another chapter two. The style that I'm selecting is, is heading star two. And I, I type um, um, definition of terms. So in doing so, it is actually doing your table of content for you by arranging it. We will look at how to do table of content differently from what we have. But whilst you are doing your work, you can actually use the multi-level list to actually arrange your work so that anybody who picks the work will know chapter one was the 111 items and the chapter two is flowing that way. And as you keep on to add, then add it. so for instance let me just try another one so let's say the definition of term the first definition of term i want to look at is computer so this one is coming under definition of terms so i go to heading star three and type computer in this way the item is saying that when i go to 2.2 there is another item under 2.2 known as computer so that items clearly comes under the definition of terms Okay, so let's look at another thing that let's look at how to um, cut, copy, and paste. So, for instance, the word computer, when I highlight it and then I go to cut on the clipboard, cut, it takes the word computer off. Then the paste part is highlighted. So, when I cut it, it depends on where I want to paste it. So, let's say I want to bring it here, I click there. And I go to paste. You realize that it took out the whole word computer and pasted it in a new place. In this case, let me do this again. Let me just highlight computer and this time go to copy. When I go to copy and decide to paste it here and I paste it, you realize that it gives me a paste of the word computer and still maintains the one that I copied from here there. So paste or copy will make a duplicate of what you want whilst cut will take the whole document away from what you have. You have to first select what you want to cut or what you want to copy. Now the next thing that we are turning our attention to is the insert tab. Insert tab. Okay, so let's click on insert tab. Now in the insert tab, where we are where our interest lies, actually the header and footer group. The header and footer group. Okay. That's we first look at the header. So 
if you have a document actually and you come to the topmost part and you double click there hmm, double click it will activate the header for you the word will assume that you want to work on the header so it will activate the header for you let's use this when we double click inside our work the header and footer that we, we open will, will close so let's go to insert then we click on header so when we click on that we can actually click for the drop down arrow to open the header type that we want so it's you can choose any of the header type you want and uh, in this case let's select um, this one that is the the banded the banded okay so we have selected the banded so here we can actually click to type in what we want to put in our header so we can click there and then just change the header to what you want so we have intro introduction to computers so that is the title that we want to work with and then when we have finished doing the title so it's a header that will appear on every page of the document we can use the close header and footer here to close it or we can double click inside the work any area inside the work to close it so when i use here it will close at the same time when i double click inside the work it will close it for me so that is our header let's look at our footer so we still go to the insert tab then click on the drop down arrow to choose the type of footer we want because we use banded let's choose banded so click on banded and this other footer is what you have down in this case the footer is actually giving us a page number so it has actually inserted one two three into our page number so the footer and the footer help us to choose our page number so that we can properly refer to our document so when i double click on it again in any part of the document it goes and now i have a page numbering on my page in our next video we we'll actually look at how to do different types of page numbers if you have alphabet and numbers together and you want your cover page to be different not not having any um number on it we will learn how to do that in our next video now the last item we'll do is that once you are working on your work you can actually insert a new blank page so there are two ways to go about there are several ways anyway i will choose either you click on file and select new to give you a, a blank document that you can choose to work with or you can actually press control on the keyboard and press n so it will give you a new blank document straight away control n whilst you work and you come to the down part of your work that is a tax bar you can actually see the document that you are working on so far when i click on it all the ones you see opening are documents that are actually open and i can actually close them from here from the tax bar by clicking on them so if i don't want to save it it will ask me if i want to save or not so basically week one these are the activities you are supposed to understand as part of your ITS course in the University of Cape Coast. Thank you. Meet you in week two.